Welcome to this video from In 28 Minute. Thanks for all your love which helped us to grow to 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and more than 46,000 students on Udemy. You can find more about us on our website www.in28minutes.com. This video is a part of series of 100 plus videos celebrating my 15 years of experience with programming, design and architecture. In these videos, we talk about how to become a good programmer and a good architect. We also talk about Java related frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies other than the varied range of tools that we make use of. You can find more details in the description of the video. Hi there. Welcome to this video on design and agile. So how is design evolving with agile? So that's the topic that we would discuss as part of this video. So you know that like a few a decade back, a little more than that back, waterfall was the most prevalent model. The way used we used to develop software was we used to really kind of see it like a design of a building or a design of an airplane where we actually had a lot of phases so you had the first phase where you do requirements for three months then you have architecture phase where you do architecture for three months then design detailed design for three months and then you get into the coding at let's say a year down the line or six months down the line and then system testing so this was kind of the approach which was used uh, in the initial stages of software development this uh, like it made sense at that time and also uh, like it had its own set of problems because of doing this. Uh, so there came a new model called Agile where the focus is on iterations. So you kind of do the same things but in very smaller iterations. So you'd kind of do uh, like the, you identify what are the most prioritized items. So what, what are the items, what are the most important items and you start developing them in smaller cycles of one week or two weeks and this kind of uh, makes sure that you are actually evolving the product along with the requirement one of the most important things with agile is the fact that it recognizes that software requirements are not set in stone so a customer does not know what he wants from his system at the start so as he sees the product, his thinking, his I mean, what he like his thinking of what he needs from the product evolves, and that's the same thing with either coding. I mean, that's the same thing with design or coding. So let's look at that right now. So this is kind of the gradual switch from what waterfall to agile, and what really has changed is with agile there is no. Sp specific phase where you do a big design up from so there is no separate phase saying okay i'll spend three months doing design and architecture nope that doesn't happen so the focus is on doing like identifying the current requirements have a big level vision so have a vision in mind but they would not i mean like try and have a picture of high level architecture so i would really have a picture saying this is the high level architecture uh, that's basically it so you'd not spend three or four months doing the big design the other thing is clear separation between architecture and design we'll look at that uh, very soon so there is less focus on documentation as well i mean uh, this doesn't say it's absent i'm just saying it's lesser focus on documentation and the focus is on today's requirements and not really to build something which would meet like requirements 10 years down the line because you don't really know what the requirements 10 years down the line are the thinking is basically if you build a good system for today and you have good test bed then you should be able to refactor it and evolve the system to meet the future requirements um, the fact that we are more prepared for change or i mean <laughs> i wouldn't say we are more prepared for change or you expect change but you are never prepared for change right so there would always be things coming in which you don't really expect and that's kind of the norm so probably the thinking is like earlier if a change comes in it's like oh my god so now it's not oh my god but little lesser oh my god i guess uh, and also more focus on code so that's one of the things which has changed a lot so instead of focusing on documentation, I mean, 
I'm not saying documentation is absent. I really love good documentation and uh, it's very important to have uh, documentation on the essential parts. But the focus is more sh shifting to code. So can I have a working system showing whatever we are talking about? So that's where we are migrating towards. So let's take each one of them and discuss a little bit about that. So no big design up front. So basically there is no separate design phase as such. So each day a developer does design, a little bit of design, a little bit of coding, um, test unit testing. Uh, like if you're following test driven development, then you would write your unit test first and then do the, uh, th then do your coding. And also the most important thing is, uh, I found that doing test driven development is a good thing to improve your design because you start looking from outside in. So design keeps evolving. So the thing with uh, Agile is that the focus is on evolving design. So you make decisions just in time. Uh, one important thing that we would distinguish with is architectural decisions versus design decisions. We'll look at that later. So you see that design decisions are made just in time. I mean, architecture decisions, which are very important, are made a little bit of upfront. So we would uh, discuss that. So design and architecture are demarcated. So basically, architectural decisions are those decisions which are hard to change. So once you make the decision, uh, it's very difficult to change that. So which framework to use, which communication pattern to use, which ORM to use. Do you really want to use an ORM? These kind of decisions are really hard to change. So it's really good to identify those kind of decisions and spend some time. So invest some time during your sprint zero or your technical phases or do some spikes to identify what to do for these architectural decisions. So it's very important that you uh, make, spend time to identify and to identify and make the right architectural decision choice. However, Design decisions are those things which are easy to change. So whether they should be a super class, whether it should be an abstract, whether there should be a separate method, whether I have to create a new class, all these kind of things. If I have good tests, then these are easy to refactor. So the design decisions are easier to do. If I have good test bed, then I can easily change my design decisions. However, artificial decisions are hard to change. So there should be a clear demarcation between artificial decisions and design decisions. And whenever you're implementing any functionality, you have to identify the architectural decision. So when I'm, let's say, looking at a specific user story or looking at a specific epic, then I would try and look at it and say, okay, I need architecture decision here. So let's do a spike here. So let's do a couple of weeks of spike or a couple of uh, like two sprints of spike and see uh, what I, ha I can do. So you can kind of get a senior developer or your architect or your like, or check if there are specific uh, decisions roadmap uh, for that kind of stuff in your enterprise. So look, look at all the things before you make artificial decisions, things which are hard to change. You need to think about them well before you make uh, like a decision. So, all the other decisions which can be changed very easily, you can make them uh, like just in time. So that's the most important thing about design and architecture demarcated. Uh, the other thing is less focus on documentation. So I'm used to having a 200 page document describing the design. What would happen? It gets out outdated very soon. Nobody has time to update it. So whenever somebody gets under pressure, the first thing which gets lost is documentation. So I'm, I'm not really a great fan of having 200 pages or 300 pages document, but it's very important to have something like a confluence or a wiki where you kind of keep your design documented. So it doesn't have to be a formal PPT or it doesn't have to be a formal uh, doc uh, like picture. It can just be a hand drawing. I mean, as, as long as it shows what the system is, what are the important parts and how they connect with each other. Uh, it's uh, good enough. So have less focus, but do have important documentation. Again, the focus is on today's requirements. So try and develop the best possible system for today's requirements. I mean, have a little bit of view of the future, not really try and incorporate every future requirement into your system design right away. So uh it's 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 a tough balance to maintain but i would say 
rather focus on today's requirements, have a good system, have something which adheres to the four principles of simple design with clean code for today's requirements. And I'm sure if you follow those, you'd be able to meet your future requirements very easily. Uh, the other thing, as I said, is change is expected. So things change. So the only thing I can do to make sure I'm prepared is to make sure that I really have good automation test bed. So when things change, your functionality breaks. So whenever I make a change, big change to code, there's a high chance that functionality breaks. So the only way to avoid that is to have really good automation test bed. So whether it's your unit test, whether your automation integration test, whether it's your automated UAT test. So you, having a good automated test bed is part of being prepared for change. Have simple design, very simple design. Don't make it overly complex. Uh, make use of the refactoring tools and code is given utmost importance. So whenever I'm discussing design, I would actually pull up some code and discuss that. So it's more like code is the universal truth. Code is the ultimate truth. Uh, designers are expected to code. I mean, that's an attitude. So it's actually, uh, there is no specific thing saying, okay, these guys are designers uh, or these guys are programmers. So it's basically everybody is expected to code and design and even your architects are expected to be hands-on. Let's look at what are the important design things that you need to focus on. So let's say you are joining an Agile project, you are writing some code, uh, you want to uh, understand what are the important things. So for me, the most important things to do, focus on are four principles of simple design, uh, solid principles, and make sure that you are adhering to test driven development. So if you follow these three, you already are making a good start towards evolutionary design. Identify the important principles. So clarity of code is an important principle. So let's focus on standards because standards just say complexity of method is less than 10. So if I have a method which is less than 10, does that make it readable? No. So the focus should be on principles rather than standards. And the four principles of simple design are very important for me. So runs all tests. That basically means that you have good tests and you keep running the tests all the time. Uh, the next one is contains no duplication, obviously. So uh, duplication in terms of concepts, in terms of lines of code. So op you should not have any concept repeated twice in code. So that's as simple as that. So if you have concept repeated twice, then whenever you make a change, you have to remember to make changes to two parts and that makes it really difficult. So you need to try and identify the single part where you, are, you put that responsibility and have no duplication at all. And the third one is express intent of programmers or it's readable code. So your code should be readable. So if I'm looking at any method, it should be readable between, let's say less than a minute. So you should be able to look at a method and understand what it's doing within a method. If it takes longer, then it's no good. The other thing is minimize the number of classes and methods. So keep it small. So have as, as less methods as possible, have as small methods as possible, have small classes as possible, small packages, small components, everything as small as possible. So these are the four principles of simple design. So if you are adhering to this, you really have a good start. Solid principles are also very important. Single responsibility principle, a class should have one reason to change. Open, close principle. Open for extension, close for modification. List of substitution principle. Inheritance is not really applicable everywhere. Uh, in inheritance is not really the silver bullet. Uh, interface segregation principle, have separate interfaces for separate uh, applications or separate consumers. Dependency inversion principle, that's also very, very important one. With Spring Framework, it makes it very easy. So these are the important principles that are uh, good from the object-oriented perspective. Follow test driven development, red, green, refactor, failing test, uh, code to make it pass, refactor, make it clean. Again, write a small test, make it pass, refactor and make it good. So this is uh, ever ending cycle, never ending cycle actually. <laughs> so red, green, refactor, keep doing that. Uh, refactoring is also very important. Um, the thing, thing is, uh, code keeps evolving and you need to understand that refactoring is part of our everyday life. It's not some activity you do at the end of a release or something of that kind. So Make sure that you are improving your code every day. That's most important. You can spend some time looking at this example. You can pause the screen here and this one. This is the complete example. So you can see these two things. And also you can look at this particular piece of code. So this is 
the same example example code one one so this is one method and this is the same method written in a different way so you can try and identify what are the differences between these two methods so example code one versus example code two and try and see how example code is so readable has really good design and it makes it easy for anybody to maintain this code so i would really love if you can spend some time and see what's the difference between these two and try and understand how to write really good code um, there you go those are the important things that you need to consider with agile and design thanks for watching this video we created this video to celebrate my 15 years of experience with design architecture and programming we have created two complete git repositories for you java technology for beginners and java best practices java best practices covers my 15 years of experience with design patterns code quality design architecture and modern development practices we talk about rest services soap web services microservices cloud native applications four principles of simple design among a varied range of other topics tells you how to become a good programmer designer or an architect java technology for beginners focuses on the frameworks concepts practices and terminologies and tools related to application development. You can find link to the repositories in the description of the video. In 28 minutes has some of the highest rated courses on varied range of topics. You can find more information on our website www.in28minutes.com.